Hey, it's Square Guy back with some more Let's Play the Talos Principle. Today, we're gonna go into World B5. How many are there? Seven plus a boarded up one plus a, a star place. All right, we're gonna go into World 5. And if we. No, nah, I don't think we'll you fill up solved number three. many of the mysteries of this land. The road before you is still long and many gates remain closed. But take comfort in your accomplishment. And in your creator's pride. Mm-hmm. Today, we're gonna find this last green piece, which means we're gonna get to see what Temple C is like. We're not gonna start it, but we're gonna at least get to go there and look at it. So, let's see what this computer has. Osiris 7. Tell me of the fearsome demons of the dust, the uh, demons of the duat. The dying man said to the wise scribe. Though their terrible forms are loathsome to behold, they are not evil, for they are the servants of the gods. Truly, they are the blessed doorkeepers and guardians of the holy paths. Their charge is to judge whether we are worthy to pass the gates that lead to Aru. And so they challenge us with riddles or in combat. Is this true of all the beings that live in the Duat? Some say that it is not so that there are ancient gods whose names have been forgotten, and spirits of darkness whose names none have ever known, and that these must be avoided at all costs. But others say that these too serve a greater purpose in ways that Osiris has not revealed to us. So, uh, full disclosure, I've never found Egyptian mythology to be that interesting. Um, like with this Osiris and the, the Ba and the Ka. Uh, I like Stargate, the, it was a great TV show. But actual Egyptian mythology is just kind of falling flat to me. Like I like Greek mythology, I like Hebrew mythology, um, Japanese uh, thing, uh, mythology from all over the world, just Egyptian has just not been interesting to me. Oh, it's weird. What is the point of being alive? I know, I know, it's an old question and not one that's easy to answer. But I mean, if you're reading this, you are alive. And someday you will stop being alive. Both of these facts are incontrovertible. So what about it then? Don't you wonder? Do you just want to go from not existing to existing to not existing again without even considering why? You, right now, as you sit there reading this, why do you exist? What is the purpose of your life? Do you have one? Should you have one? Is it better to have a purpose or not? When you approach death, will you feel that your life had meaning? If so, why? If not, why not? What defines whether a life was good or not? It may seem abstract right now, but the mo that moment just before death will come. It's inevitable. If you don't ask yourself these questions, how will you face that moment? Yeah, my thoughts on the, the meaning and purpose of life or my thought, I guess this is about the purpose of life, is that we exist, therefore that is the purpose of life. <laughs> the, the, I think I've said before in a different Let's Play, the purpose of life is to experience existence, and anything else is something that we or somebody else has put on top of that. That's my view on purpose of life. Uh, if we get to the meaning of life, I also have, the well, meaning of life is easy, it's just you do stuff like like uh, you read books you uh, build your life up with a job you travel the world that's the meaning of life you do stuff from rob mclean institute for applied pneumatics hi mom i promise i'll be home soon maybe a couple of weeks i i know i know but what we're doing here is important and the team needs my help I'm not going to wait until it's too late, I promise, but there's so much we have to set up, so much that has to work for a very, very long time. Besides, I always wanted to work on one of these supercomputers, and believe me, and believe me, L is pretty much the best there is. And the team, Mom, it's like I'm working with rock stars and mad geniuses, except nobody's heard of them outside the, of science journals, of course. But Dad would be totally geeking out if he knew. Maybe I can tell him about it soon, huh? Cool. More lore from the characters. Alright. Where are we? This looks like a big place. How far can we go? 
Okay, it's an island. These island worlds remind me of... Everybody say it with me. Mist! Because mist comes up in every Let's Play. Because it's just... Yeah, if you don't know that I love mist, now you do. And it, for anyone who ever comes to my Let's Play and watches any series, they will know that I love mist. <laughs> And I'm, I have a computer now, so I can play Abduction. I'm gonna play Abduction soon, guys. I'm gonna play the next game after Mist that the Mist team created. Uh, but not yet. And not next either, I think. It's gonna be a little while. This is neat. This little stream with plants growing out of it. I guess I'm just circumnavigating the island. What's the, I, that's, I can't go out there, that's for sure. Can I go here? No, I can't. That's a pretty steep drop off. Uh, okay. It, you, you fall through the floor to another floor. Oh no, maybe it's just, maybe the surface is just gunky. But it definitely looks like the surface is not that deep. Alright, there's this... ...place over here. That looks like the main place with all the puzzles. Or maybe all the puzzles are little places like this. What's this over here? Is there a star in here? Uh, as editing... So I've been editing... I'm like five episodes ahead. And as I've been editing, I've had little ideas on how to get previous stars. Oh, it's a special computer. What do we found? Hippocratic corpus. On the sacred disease, 400 BC. Men ought to know that from nothing else but the brain comes joys, delights, laughter, and sports and sorrows, griefs, despondency, and lamentations. And by this, in an especial manner, we acquire wisdom and knowledge, and see and hear, and know what are foul and what are fair, what are bad and what are good, what are sweet and what are unsavory. Some we discriminate by habit, and some we perceive by their utility, but this we by this we distinguish objects of, re of relish and disrelish, according to the seasons. And the same things we do not, the th same things do not always please us. And by the same organ we become mad and delirious. And fears and terrors assail us, some by night and some by day. And dreams and ultimately wanderings and cares that are not suitable. And ignorance of present circumstances, destitute, and unskillfulness. Yep. The brain is responsible for all that. Bronstein Brain. Is the next one... I didn't read the next one. Is it going to be Boltzmann Brain? <laughs> the human brain is a product of the development of matter, and at the same time is an instrument for the cognition of this matter. Gradually, it adjusts itself to its function, tries to overcome its limitations, creates ever new scientific methods, imagines ever more complex and exact instruments, checks its worth again and again, step by step, penetrates into previously unknown depths, changes our conception of matter, without, though, ever breaking away from this basis of all that exists. It's a very materialist computer, which also happens to be uh, essentially my views. The human brain is a machine for coming to conclusions. If it cannot come to conclusions, it is rusty. When we hear of a man too clever to believe, we are hearing of something having almost the character of a contradiction in terms. It is like hearing of a nail that was too good to hold down a carpet, or a bolt that was too strong to keep a door shut. That can hardly be defined after the fashion of Carlyle as an animal who makes tools, and some beavers and many other animals make tools, in the sense that they make an apparatus. Man can be defined as an animal that makes dogmas, as he piles doctrine on doctrine and conclusion on conclusion in the formation of some tremendous scheme of philosophy and religion, he is, in the only legitimate sense of which the expression is capable, becoming more and more human. 
when he drops one doctrine after another in a refined skepticism, when he declines to tie himself to a system, when he says that he has outgrown definitions, when he says that he disbelieves in finality, when in his own imagination he sits as God holding no form of creed but contemplating all, then he is by that very process sinking slowly backwards into the vagueness of the vagrant animals and the unconsciousness of the grass. Trees have no dogmas, turnips are singularly broad-minded. So this is, this is actually using an idea of like the essence of an object, like saying, saying a human is this. And so if you are doing this, you are being human. And if you are not doing this, then you're, you're being less human. And that's what it feels like to me. I don't agree with that kind of conception of things because it is like it, it, that this, this is an opinion. And so it's not an objective description. It, this, this whole text is an opinion. And it makes some sense and it's an idea worth considering, but uh, I, I don't know. Some of these, some of these texts have come across to me as like sort of heavy handedly shoving ideas at me. You know, some of them have been really cool and expanded my brain, but some of them it's just like, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel enriched for having read that. Physiological history. Volunteer suffered a blood clot during infancy, which resulted in a left hemisphere stroke. Expected result? In normal adults, the left hemisphere is used for language and other cognitive functions. Extensive damage to this part of the brain usually results in severe cognitive deficiencies. Observed result? Volunteer is now 17 years old and displays only very subtle cognitive deficiency. I have not been reading this at all. I've just been speaking it out loud, so... Um, blood clot during infancy, uh, stroke, and now this kid is 17 years old and is basically a normal kid. MRIs indicate little to no activity in the left hemisphere, suggesting its usual functions have been taken on by neuron sets in the right. Volunteer's age at the time of the stroke may have helped the brain to adapt. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's uh, to the plasticity of the brain. Like, the brain is this amazing and wonderful thing. We're much farther away from the moon in this one than we were in some of the others. The brain is this... Or, or was that a different game? I don't remember. The brain just rewires itself and does all kinds of... Like, it's super adaptable. Um, especially if the damage happens the younger you are. All right, I don't, well, so we found something out here. Um, and here's something else. The voice keeps saying that this world is a garden, but all I see is a desert full of ruins. Dog. So I can go out here. Did I find something? Did I find a secret? I don't know, I don't think so. No, there's just this sunken stuff. It's not secrets. Yeah, there's no secrets out here. Alright, what next? Have we already been here? Yeah, I think that's where we jumped off the first time. No, I don't think it is. I don't know where we are. Anyway, let's go do a puzzle. Let's find a puzzle and do it. Oh, no, there's a thing in the middle. Nope, let's just do the puzzle. We'll go to the middle later. Red bar. Alley of the pressure plates. We're using all of the tools we unlocked. Did I just step into the hardest one of this world? <laughs> right. That one comes down. We have this. Okay, this can get us through these two things. But there's... Four. So, all right, what have we got? Well, I'm not blocking it. <laughs> what is this? What is it? Oh, it's powering the fan. Do 
Do I need this fan for anything? I can look around, I guess. Um, maybe if I get a connector? No. No, I don't think so. What's that button doing? Oh, it's opening this. I don't think there's any reason to come over here. Yet. So, I might be wrong. So let's just do sort of a leapfrogging thing. Can this- does this- No. This button doesn't do both of them, it only does the next one. Okay, and we might actually need this to connect somewhere. Like, we might want this to be our last one. Um... Oh no, I can't... Oh! Oh, I see. So if I do this, then I can take these objects through... Uh, let's just go through this one for now and see what's on the other side. But if I do the switch, then I can pick all of these up and put them uh, wherever they need to go. I can take all of those over here. Okay, is there anything over here? Is there any reason to come over here? I can see that, which it doesn't matter. Oh, am I gonna need to shoot a laser through here? I think I am. Let's see what happens when I take these tools through. Because I need to, I need to use, I see, I need to use this laser to get over there. That's gonna be a challenge. So maybe if I have, <laughs> if I have a fan blowing a box in the connector up there, then I can shine it into there and open that, but then I'd have to be able to get through here. Okay, let's see. I would need to use all three of these. I need to use all three of these to get that to, to work. So actually, I couldn't even do it. Oh, I could if I used the play thing. So let's go over to the, through that next door and see if there's any more tools over there. All right, I don't actually need to do anything with these right now. Got all of them. Alright, let's see what's over here. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is over here. Whew. So, what I need to do is I need to have one, two, three, four, five buttons pushed. I need to have five buttons pushed. I need a fan, a box, and a connector over there to connect the laser with this. <sighs> and I can only have six objects at once, so so clearly, I need to... Okay. Uh, so clearly I need to reset because these items can't be in here. Alright, I think I might have stumbled into the hardest puzzle of the... of the level. Okay. So I need a fan, 
a box and a connector that's connected to the laser, that thing, and this thing. Okay. How... In order to get the three objects into here, I need to use the play button. Because I need to leave one on here, and then and I need to bring them in here and knock them up. But then, then I don't have any way of bringing them back out. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this one. I'm guessing it's gonna use some ideas that are that are um, uh, built up in the other puzzles. This is probably one of the hardest ones in this place. I'll go to some easier ones first. I've been running this gauntlet for generations, trying to find the right answers. I am fast coming to the conclusion that there are none. But you're wrong. Because I know for a fact that this game was made by humans for humans. But you, you, that's kind of a meta level of figuring it out. By the way, that's my mentality for solving puzzles. This was made by humans for humans, and therefore... Oh, the sign fell off. Is this... Is this a puzzle without a... Door? Or is it just empty? What's the purpose? We're talking about purposes, what's the purpose? I'm looking behind stuff. This is like there was a puzzle here before, but now there's not. And uh, I'm not seeing any, any hidden chambers where there might be stars. Yeah, you know, I think I, uh... I think I'll do third person for, for a little while. We haven't done third person yet. Slightly elevated sigil. This one's green. I think the greens might be easier than the reds. Alright. Uh, this one looks simple enough. Is there a box somewhere? Is there a connector? Where's the box? Is it in here? Right there. Alright, just looking around to see if there's hidden chambers. <laughs> Stars are in hidden chambers. Alright, now I gotta put this on the fan. And then I gotta take this, connect. Nope. This is going to be a challenge in third person. Let's do an easy puzzle in third person. Got to connect these, and I got to connect this one. Wait, why am I connecting this one? Oh, there's another connector. So one of these is not going to work. Oh. Yeah. That would do it. <laughs> So let's get this door open so we have the other connector. And no... No stars visible outside over the walls. This is definitely easier for looking over walls than the first person is. Alright. Now, we have this one, and instead of hitting that laser, we hit this. And this. And this. There we go. And it lifts up, and what? 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 Oh, I have an idea. Get off. <laughs> oops. No, that's not an oops. I need to also... I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Hit that, and I also need to connect here. Oops, dang it. 
stupid third person. Actually, all I need is this one. And this one. Oh no. I, I need this one. And this one. And this one. There we go. Now I can take this one away. And it's still lifted up. There we go. And now, I should be able... To connect it here. Yeah! I did it! And now we have enough greens to go into Temple C! I'm so excited! Alright, now all these red ones. Do we have yellows? Which I think... I had an idea what that... That... That, that thing that looks like someone's clinging to the ceiling would be? But I forgot it. Like, I thought it was gonna- I- I supposed it would be an ability or something. I don't- I don't remember what it was. Is it something you unlock in Temple C? So I- I- I was like, oh, I- I bet this is a thing. And I'm like, well, what is it? I don't- I forgot. Oh, hey, look! It's one of these out here. So I gotta find a pan- a fan that I can take out. And I need to find... Oh, yeah! I just remembered... A star! So, before we go to Temple C, we're gonna get a star that I thought of a way to get. Or something to do. Remember in the previous episode? I think it was the previous episode. When we got a star? And the fan launched us clear out of the level? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that... I'm thinking of taking an item out of the level. Um, although I haven't thought farther than that. Let's see, what have we got? There's two over there, one over here. That's the hard one. Wait, where's the hard one? It's over there somewhere. Probably over there. Is this? That's where we started. Okay. Let's go into this one. <laughs> 